Hi friend. What you're about to see is a community live stream replay with Shivam Thapliel all about the role of illustration in product design, which we recorded and streamed exclusively for the design community back in October of 2022. In this live stream, we talk a lot about where illustration shows up in product design and how you as a product designer might be able to improve your collaboration workflow with illustration or even begin embracing illustration into your design work. Shivam previously worked at Flipkart and has over four years of experience working as a product illustrator. So it's got some really great insights to share with you in this stream. A special shout out to Superpair who supports this channel. This live stream was actually recorded over on Superpair where I run my entire Femke.Design community. So go and check it out at Femke.Design slash community to sign up. You can also get coaching sessions with me over on Superpair. Would love to see you there. Anyway, enjoy this stream. To today's live stream. Uh, let us know in the chat that you can see us and hear us okay. I am really excited to talk today about illustration and the role of illustration within product design. Uh, before we get into it, I'm curious to hear from the group uh, how many of you have an in house illustrator at your current company? Uh, let me know in the chat. Uh, I was fortunate when I was working at Uber to have an in-house illustration team, which was really cool. So we had custom illustrations. I didn't have to do the illustrations myself, but I've also worked at places where we don't have that as a resource. And then so as designers, you're kind of responsible for figuring out uh, the illustration part of your designs and your design process. So yeah, let me know in the chat uh, if you work with an in-house illustrator. If not, don't worry, we're gonna, I'm sure, touch on how you can bring illustration into your design process. Uh, and before we jump into the main content for today's session, uh, I want to introduce our special guest today, Shivam. Uh, Shivam, would you like to introduce yourself to the group? Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Shivam Tapyal. I work as Senior Product Illustrator for Swiggy, which is a food and uh, convenience app. Um, it's it's uh, based out of India, and um, I have been working with uh, Swiggy for two years. Overall, I have four years of experiences as a product illustrator. Uh, and uh, I am actually an engineer. That's a less known fact. Oh my gosh, I a... didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fun fact, fun fact. Uh, and can you maybe just share a little bit about who Swiggy is and what Swiggy does for those who might not be familiar with the company? So Swiggy started as a food delivery app. Now it's a convenience app as well. So apart from ordering food, now you can order groceries and you can send packages across um, in India. And it is, uh, uh, and apart from that, we are also coming up with a lot of new, uh, new, exciting products. Cool, very, very cool. And okay, so I didn't know that you were an engineer originally. So can you share a little bit about how you went from engineering to illustration? Because that's that's a jump that I haven't heard people doing very, very often before. Yeah, so I was in uh, college. Uh, I, I, did, I did four years uh, undergraduate in uh, computer science engineering. And uh, uh, in college, you know, when you're in uh, fresher, uh, there's a lot of activities that you can be a part of. And one of them is like designing or, uh, you know, joining community. And uh, I was fortunately part of uh, not one, but several committees. And I knew Photoshop and Illustrator already. Uh, not Illustrator, mm -hmm. Illustrator. I learned data, but I knew Photoshop. So from there, I started, uh, you know, making graphics and uh, visual design and all. And then towards like my final year, I got to a point where I had uh, really understood it really well. And I was, I was, uh, you know, reaching out to companies and getting a call that like, would you be interested wow. working with us? And uh, after, after that, like I did do, uh, I did practice uh, uh, computer science engineering. I was working as a backend developer for almost six months after which, uh, one of my friends, uh, her name is Aisha Rana, and she's also my mentor. So she was working with Flipkart and she had left and uh, Flipkart was looking for a product illustrator. So then she mm. reached out to me if I'm interested uh, to, uh, you know, send my resume and see how it goes. So I did that and uh, yeah, I got a call for internship, uh, left my engineering job, uh, 
went to Bangalore, uh, did my internship, uh, converted it to full time, and then worked for Flipkart for two years. Wow, that's that's such a brave leap to make, like to like take it that is. chance it into is. a whole new role, and now you're like making a whole career out of it, which is awesome. Yeah, it was a really tough decision. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that I hate coding. Like a lot of people say, oh. Uh, yeah, I also hate coding and all, but <laughs> I actually enjoy coding. I, I really love yeah. it. And I also do creative coding, but it just I felt like uh, being being a developer would just add one more developer to this world. But being a product <laughs> less, I would be I would be able to contribute uh, much more than I would mm. have if I was if I were to be a developer. So yeah, yeah it was a really tough decision, quite honestly, but uh, I'm glad I took the, the leap of the leap of faith. Totally, yeah, it's a, it's a working out for you, which is awesome. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start by talking a little bit about the role of illustration and like what that looks like in a product or like tech kind of environment. Um, and for folks tuning in as we're sort of going throughout the conversation, and you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the super peer chat in the bottom right, uh, and I'll make sure that we save some time to get to those towards the end. Uh, so, okay, maybe first of all, Shivam, like what is the role of an illustrator, especially in this context, like you're working full time, you're maybe in-house at a tech company. What does kind of your day-to-day -day look like? What are you sort of doing? So, okay, that's a, that's a big question. So I'll try to <laughs> unpack it uh, in several steps. Uh, firstly, like, like when we say illustrator, in general, uh, it's kind of different when you work in-house versus agency, or if you're freelancing, usually the projects are quite smaller and uh, uh, they are kind of chunked when you're working um, not as a, a uh, in-house illustrator. So you'd get a job of like, let's say we need a pack of 150 icons or 200 icons, or sometimes like we need, uh, you know, 10 uh, illustrations for our product and that's it. But when you're working in-house, you sort of owning the entire illustration system of that particular product. Mm, so mm -hmm. you have the responsibility of not just creating the assets, but also to maintain the entire uh, library of assets and also to maintain uh, the entire uh, visual illustration uh, library. So it's a bigger job uh, to be in uh, full time, not in a sense of like who does more, but in terms of like what can be done, uh, what should not be done. So you are kind of responsible for all of that. Um, and of course, when you're working in house, you're also collaborating with uh, um, other teams as like product design, uh, marketing, as opposed to when you're working uh, like as a freelancer or an agency, you are you tend to sort of collaborate sometimes yeah. with just one team. So you don't have the entire context. So when you're working in-house, you sort of have to have a, like a full context of everything and how that particular decision or the idea can affect other places as well. So, so that's like a broad level of difference mm -hmm. that I see. Uh, but in terms of if you were to ask day-to-day, -day, it kind of really depends. Like the basics of like in just execution is product illustration specifically is iconography and illustration. So iconography is also part of product illustrations. Uh, so usually in my day, I would uh, make icons or I would make product illustrations and collaborate with uh, product designers and uh, product marketing and uh, product managers. So for example, if a feature is to be launched and we're introducing a new feature, so that the most common case is we are introducing a new feature and we want to uh, sort of uh, do product marketing and introduce the feature to our users and how do we go about it so usually it, the discussion is how do we onboard them and make them aware that this is a new feature so in that case we, mm. we, we sort of sometimes do uh, let's say videos or like a bottom sheet with uh, with introducing this feature and then there's icons and spots so that kind of varies from like a full visual experience like as we were as video to like just having icons or uh, branding an internal uh, product with just some small icon yeah and you mentioned that like part of the role is like it's not just doing the illustrations but it's also like owning the, the system and, and the style and the process 
And I'm curious, like how that works in an illustration team. So on like a product design team, we often, if we're lucky, we have like dedicated like design systems, designers, like that's their full-time job is to look after the system, right? They're not like actively working on features and products. So hmm. what does that look like in an illustration team? Like, do you all share that responsibility and look after that together? Or do you have like dedicated illustrators on the team that are responsible for like creating the style and the library and things like that? So, uh, so the way it is structured, at least for Swiggy, is that uh, we have a team of product illustrators and visual designers, um, and mm -hmm. we are around four to five of us. So we are allocated to, like, each one individually owns a pod, uh, which okay. is, like, owns a vertical. Uh, so yeah. somebody is just owning food. Uh, I own uh, new initiatives, which is Instamart and Genie. Uh, so these are the new verticals that uh, Swiggy comes up with. And then somebody else is taking care of the delivery sides or uh, partner side, which is like restaurants. So everyone has an individual uh, visual designer slash illustrator, uh, okay. product illustrator. And at the same time, we do have Central Repo, uh, which is like our product illustration library. That is like WIP. We are still working with try to uh, tweak it. But mm -hmm. even, in, even in that, uh, the way it works is uh, anybody can quite honestly make the contribution, but once in a week we kind of get together and we sort of agree together with, with the help of managers and uh, okay. the design director that this is the direction of the visual that we want to take. Uh, this is what we are pitching. And whenever we have like an agreement, disagreement, we sort of brainstorm about it, do some revisions, iterations, and mm -hmm. then we sort of come back. And then uh, we put it together back in the system. So that's how it is. And uh, usually the best way is to uh, put together uh, guidelines, playbooks, and sort of creating a central uh, repository of not just like consumable assets that somebody can use, but also like, what are your principles? Uh, what is your thought process? What is... Uh, right. What is what is the brand uh, language? So that kind of gives a good context for anybody, uh, not yeah. just product illustrators, but uh, any product designer or uh, you know across team as well onboarding. So they get a sense of what what the language is. Yeah, yeah, because it's that's so important to like be all on the same page of like what is that language and like what are our principles. Um, can you share maybe a little bit around what does the design process look like for an illustrator? Uh, probably most people watching this are product designers or UX designers. Uh, so from an illustration kind of role, what is that design process? How does that differ? So uh, the way it, it, it works usually is uh, firstly, there are two ways to approach it. Uh, first is being just proactive about uh the illustrations in a sense that if we know there's a vertical coming up uh, for example a, you know like something new is coming up so we know like what are the product marketing features could be so for example hygiene and covid related are some of the things we know that this is mm -hmm. going to be used for sure so one way is to just proactively start some of those things or thinking at least about that the other way which usually happens because there's always a lot of work on the table, quite honestly. So <laughs> it's usually uh, when something like this happens, you get on a call with product designer and product uh, manager and you understand the walkthrough of what is happening. It's it's usually not a design walkthrough call. It's just like, you know, this is what we are doing. This is what the goal is and understanding what, um, what we are trying to achieve here. And from that, you get a sense of what exactly the product is um, what we are trying to do and uh, that head gives you an idea of what's yet to come then later when the designers start to actually uh, work on wireframes and uh, visual design actually visual design come later but when they're working on wireframes and this is what i usually ask them to uh, you know reach out to us at the beginning of the project itself so that we have an idea where you're going to uh, need an asset or where you're planning to uh, you know uh, put illustrations and icons so sometimes mm -hmm. uh, uh, product designers uh, think that uh, they hear me might need an illustration but actually in that case you just don't even need an illustration uh, mm. where else uh, 
whereas if later we get that request of we need visual and we feel like it's not needed it's actually very late so like it's already hitting the production or the development has started so the really good time is to actually involve since the beginning of the project or at least when the wireframes are starting every we have yeah like the freedom to change the layout sometimes when you're working in layouts it looks like a visual would do a justice there but at the end towards if and i'm saying in general uh, for example if you're making a wireframe we feel like oh the visual looks good visual might look good here and then you sort of if you don't have an in-house designer and you get somebody to work on that they might just make very visually uh, uh, you know visually intricate graphic and then that will kind of take away from the entire ux so it's right. very important to in, to sort of uh, loop the product illustrators at the right time so that yeah. they have a say that do we need an illustration if we need mm. could it be just an icon and uh, if if it could very well be an icon then can we change the layout so these are some mm-hmm. of the things where there there is an overlap and the collaboration has to be a bit uh, you know stronger so yeah. um i feel like that's a good time uh, to involve otherwise uh, there are use cases where we know that this is pretty much standard layout of let's say a listicle with icons on the left and the text on the right in that case usually if that comes later that's also uh, not an issue yeah so it it sounds like i mean i i'm going to guess that probably product designers who are new to working with illustrators like probably come to an illustrator being like hey we need an illustration here and like yeah. it sounds like your preference is more like hey I'd love your help figuring out you know the visual of this or how do we communicate this in a visual way it could be an illustration it could be an icon yeah maybe it's something else entirely maybe we decided it doesn't need a visual um so I think that's a right. that's a good point to make is that like yeah your your role is not just executing on the request but also playing a strategic role in like how do we communicate something here and what what could that look like yeah that's that's really very uh, important because the moment and i've usually seen it the moment it uh, passes from like design phase and now we are starting to build it and it's in production i yeah. can't really help uh, but <laughs> actually adhere to what's on the box and fill those with visuals it's mm. usually late sometimes oh it's already in production so we can't really make those changes and that's probably a very uh, wrong time to uh, you know suggest those changes but as a yeah. as an illustrator sometimes you do realize that okay this page is not going to work if we have like a full colored um uh, hero illustration uh, working here yeah yeah so what about the cases where you know designers maybe feel like there's an opportunity for some sort of illustration or iconography or, or like a visual element um and the stakeholders say no or like you know we don't have budget for that we don't have time for that um how can mm-hmm. designers sort of convince their stakeholders of the value of illustration in in their work so the best way is to prove it with like some dummy images usually what we do or what we do in in um in, in swiggy or in flipkart as well we whatever assets we make for any project or uh, within swiggy itself we put it in a library and mm-hmm. we let people use the library wherever they want to in a sense that if you are making a new product you shouldn't be dependent on a illustrator at the moment when you are designing so at that time they will pick some already existing like 3d visuals or uh or 2d icons or 2d illustration just for the sake of getting the vibe of that page getting to yeah. see how it's going to interact and then when 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 they kind of uh balance it out and everything looks fine then we start to replace it with actual assets which are crafted so if you if you want to uh get a buy in uh, the best example is to like to to show them like a dummy uh, page or uh, to show them what it could look like or collect good examples from from you know internet or somewhere and and uh, and and that usually does the trick and if you have an in-house designer that's even better but uh, if that's also not working out in both the cases then you can also use uh, stock illustrations uh, at least for some time 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good point. It's like kind of showing them the potential value of what it could be by like putting in those like placeholder content or like whether it's stock imagery or something um, can go a long, long way. Uh, I guess yeah. for um, you, you kind of started to touch on this, but for designers who are working in an environment where they don't have illustrators or they don't have access to like a visual creative design team, um, what, what do you recommend to them? You, you talked a little bit about stock illustration libraries. Um, is there one in particular you recommend or like how, how do you sort of recommend these designers start bringing that into their design process when they're not illustrators themselves? So uh, for designers, I usually uh, say like maybe not illustration, but I definitely feel like iconography is something that they can also, you know, start. It's, it's, Icons mm -hmm. are sometimes very, like, at least there are basic icons that anybody can create. And I think that's a very interesting um, and it's a very great way to be very honest to just get started with illustration. But if you're working in a team, that's just not possible because there are a lot of requirements. So I think the best way to go about it, at least in terms of iconography, is just to buy a generic pack or have, like, a subscription of icon. Like, Noun Project is really good. Uh, or you can buy just a full pack because in full pack, they all have icons in same design library or in the same style. So that kind of keeps it together. Uh, the case with taking individual one from stock is like the styles don't mix and they don't gel up. And yeah, as you sort of scale the product and you have more people uh, joining your product, it will just, it will just be hard to replace later. So one should realize when to start uh, using uh, start using like custom illustration to have an in-house illustrator then to actually rely on stock but yeah. it's also very important initially i think using stock is fine because at the time the goal is primarily to uh, to uh, you know just have a mvp or launch a product and uh, visuals is uh, something which is very important but at the same time uh, if it comes like if it comes with the cost of timeline then probably i don't see anybody mm -hmm. prioritizing that uh, quite honestly so it's very hard at that time but i think you can uh, you can use any of the stock illustrations that are out there but it's very important who is going to use them for example as a designer you should know what the illustration is communicating i see a lot of uh, stock illustration used incorrectly uh, mm. on websites and apps and products and uh, like there's just hand pointing in in random direction and doesn't mean at all so while you should use them uh, at least until uh, you you can have an in-house designer or an illustrator uh, so it's also very important that you pay attention to uh, you pay attention to uh, what exactly uh, uh, the context is and what is the best illustration to use there. And that is like the entire game of illustration. Yeah. Yeah. When I was at Well Simple, my, my last company, uh, we had a freelancer create an icon set for us. And so we had like uh, I don't know, let's say it was like 50 icons or so. Um, and then from that, like we added any new ones, we added ourselves to the library. And it was kind of helpful because we had the set. So there was like a defined like style and like some guidelines. And so it was easier for us as like not necessarily illustrators ourselves, but we could kind of follow the style and the pattern of what our icon library should look like. Yeah. So we could contribute ourselves. Um, I mean, ideally we'd have a dedicated designer to do that, but we didn't. And so yeah. that could, I think, be another way if you can convince stakeholders to like get a custom mm. set created. Um, mm. that, that I think is a good next step after the stock illustration so that you can get something to, to help get you started at least as a team. Yeah, that's very important. And I think once the direction is set, it's easier to like have mm -hmm. a single source of truth. Otherwise, yeah. what happens if there is no, like at least the direction is not there. So what happens is somebody is using different icons, somebody is creating in a different format. And because there is no single source of truth, uh, nobody knows what will work for them. And yeah. everybody is just downloading from different places. And therefore, mm -hmm. they experience is not very cohesive so i have yeah. myself seen 
like a rupee icon or like a bill icon being different in very different uh, right. uh, steps uh, in like you know uh, payment page card page and i i i know like designers could be different working on it but as a customer or as a user i i i would have a hard time uh, recalling like what exactly this was because it's yeah. just very different on different phases yeah that's so important so i guess on that note like how involved are you with designers process when like maybe they don't need any new like content or or illustrations or iconography but um they're using things from the existing library do you sort of QA that work is there a step where like you get to review it and like approve it or are you kind of trusting the designers to use the things in the library in the right way so we actually trust uh, the designers uh, because uh, we had been working uh, uh, quite closely for um, for a lot of uh, projects mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we do get an idea that you know the visuals are in safe hands but at the same time whenever is something going out we say that you know uh, if you have any request and if if you just want to like us to just have a look at it once at, at the visual mm-hmm. design do let us know and uh, we just usually uh, check that it's in, in the right context uh, so uh, in it, it, not usually uh, it happens but sometimes there are uh, reusage of the same icon which has a very different yeah. connotation so while it may represent just a product itself or a vertical itself for example gifting a gift box i had made was used in a lot of places and i realized that it was kind of diluting its value so then i had mm. to say that can we replace it with something else so it's very important to understand that what visual um, um is being used in which place and what connotation it has and mm-hmm. therefore you don't have to also uh, like reuse something uh, which already has a very strong association in uh, users mind so we yeah. very we, we kind of ensure that everything is used uh, correctly and ha- everything has a meaning assigned to it that we don't dilute or uh, yeah. confuse yeah so important i remember when i was working at uber because it's such a global product we really had to think hard about the meaning behind the icons because icons can mean something different in different cultures like different contexts um and uh especially with things like currency currency icons but you know we're operating in many different countries so like how do like what does a global currency icon look like is it a dollar sign or you know and so i remember there was like always a lot of discussion around making sure that the iconography we're choosing like held the correct connotation and cultural context for the markets that we were designing for which was sometimes a challenge yeah it's 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 actually very true like like i can for like at least we now in india we use rupee symbol uh, because we are mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. yet outside india uh, but we within india itself we also have various different other um parameters in terms of like what culturally means to you might mean yeah. uh, something else uh, and uh, therefore that's always like um like a challenge for us to solve um so but that's also fun uh, quite honestly but uh, yeah it's it's very interesting to see like how it is different for somebody else for example there's a very interesting piece of uh piece of insight that i had gotten from one of my research uh, friends and he he told me like you know uh, these people uh, they 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 saw these corporate illustrations and they had mm-hmm. that and then they they thought that oh these are going to school is it because in india usually tie uh, is worn to school and that's the only thing that people have sometimes seen so oh, it was very different yeah it's it, it was very uh different and very interesting piece of insight that i had uh, seen yeah. um and and read about and and there are like several of them especially like in india especially in flipkart where we were dealing with uh, uh we were catering to like tier 1 tier 2 and tier 3 as well uh, so it was uh, the product was going to like remote areas of uh, mm. you know uh, every state it was really very challenging to uh, make everything very simple in terms of anybody to understand in terms of yeah. uh 
like keeping the message direct we couldn't use a lot of metaphors or uh, pop culture references um, whereas in swiggy because swiggy is slightly uh, urban in nature it's more of an convenience app and it is for people those who use it almost um, every day and they right. understand metaphors they understand um, 3d illustrations and what we use them for and uh, they understand uh, everything so we had the space to do some fun there in in swiggy so it's very interesting to see like how two apps in just same country has very different way to approach yeah. some uh, something yeah yeah i think this is a good like reminder of like the importance of thinking about the user right and who is actually using the product like we think about that a lot in product design but i think it's equally important in illustration and thinking about like who who's the person that's going to be like seeing this what does it mean to them how can we help them you know achieve the goal they're trying to achieve on this screen or in this product um so yeah it's a good good reminder how similar our goals are i think yeah um also a little bit on like collaborating so collaboration between product designers and illustrators um i know you talked a little bit earlier around like how you like to be broad and strategically uh for designers listening to this call when should they bring an illustrator into their design process what does their ideal relationship look like do you want to be there from day 1 do you want to be there once the wireframes are thought out where is kind of the the moment to bring illustration into the conversation I think it is when, and this is usually works. Um, uh, at least for me, is when the wireframes are there, because at that time we are just uh, like I try to combine the meetings in a sense that at this call only we talk about uh, like what's the goals of the project, and mm-hmm. uh, rather than doing it on day one, we do it together on uh, when we are at a wireframe stage where we get yeah. on a call and we say that this is what we are going to achieve. This is like the kind of vibe that we want to have. and then we also have product um product design screens and uh, some wireframes to talk about so from there we start to think about okay what are we trying to solve here what is the what's the use case of the page and this is like understanding the project in general or what the scope is and what are the various touch points and how it's going to have overlaps and at the same time we are also looking at like a very uh uh you know direct list of deliverables like i mean mm. like i make like a list of all the deliverables that we have so okay these many icons these many illustration these many spot illustrations these are the lotties uh, lotties also we collaborate with uh, other teams those who help us with the animation we get the okay. static uh, visuals uh, so that is also like important for me to figure out the dependency and what is the requirement because uh it takes a lot of time to like make all the visuals so any requirement that changes or anything that is required now more uh yeah. costs time and effort yes. so it usually takes like uh, like a week more for me to uh, create those uh, so therefore and of course alignment on top so therefore it's very uh, very easy to maintain and collaborate uh, by just maintaining one objective list of all the deliverables that is needed and then of course a wi- walk through of uh, designs and wireframes and as they yeah. are uh developing the visual design um i am at the same time uh working on the illustrations and sort of knocking out some of the things in just one go for example icons you know that it's a very standard format unless and until you have several styles in your app you can sort of uh pick icons in one go but icons also depend on in what context they are used mm. uh so uh billing for example in 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 uh, in some cases just just mean like a slip icon or uh, if you're going for billing that usually means like a rupee symbol or currency right. symbol because we had to pay uh, post billing it becomes like a receipt something like that uh, so that was very different in in like what use case you are using it and therefore it is important to get the context for that post yeah. you have that context you sort of like keep putting them in context and keep discussing as they are developing their visual designs you also sort of collaborate so in a in a way that in a way when you're sort of moving from uh, wireframes to now um, ui design and after the ux has been solved 
when the UI design starts, that's when you are actually crafting uh, crafting the entire illustrations right. and iconography out. But the context uh, you should get even before that, which is when the wireframes are made. Yeah, yeah. Because you mentioned uh, earlier that sometimes, you know, if you hear about it when it's already being built or being pushed to production, you're like, that's too late, right? We don't have enough time. Um, so, you know, how... I understand that this like depends on the project and the request, but just like ballpark figure so that the designers listening on this call understand how much work it is. How long typically does it take for you to like work on an illustration or how much time do you usually need um, just so that designers listening here can keep that in mind of like when in their design process they should put in this request? So I always say sooner the better, like whenever mm -hmm. you have, uh, like whenever you are starting with uh, like a project and you're already exploring some wireframes, at least give them a heads up that, hey, this will yeah. come. Not right now, maybe a month later. But it's coming. Maybe two yeah. months. Yeah. But just be aware that it's coming uh, after, after some time. And uh, usually it depends on like how many visuals are there in the project. So I usually say that, you know, just give me a walkthrough of whatever wireframes is it, because mm -hmm. basis of that, basis on that, I can actually tell. Okay, these are ten spot illustrations that I definitely foresee. Because even in like a digital project, you product, sorry, you know that there are certain things that are going to be there for sure. For example, if it's a new feature, then there's going to be onboarding. So you know that okay, one onboarding is needed. It could be uh, like a video, or it could be just an in widget introduction that differs. Uh, but you just know that there's going to be there. Then one yeah. of the things that always will be there is empty states and error states. So there are always some standard ones like internet not working, something went wrong. Uh, so these are the things that will always be there. Uh, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. branding of the, of the new vertical or branding of that, if it's happening from outside, you know it is done. If sometimes in-house, we also do uh, branding of the verticals that don't need actually like an elaborate branding. So that also we want to understand that when is it happening or is it done yet? So I would say for actually for some of the projects that actually had taken around four months to launch, like zero to one in terms of all mm -hmm. visuals. And sometimes it has taken like uh, two months as well. So like wow. kind of be prepared that whenever it's a zero to one project, it is going to take like, months if you really want to do a work that is very uh hydrated yeah. polished and you know highly uh um highly revised yeah yeah it takes it takes time sounds like it takes a lot more time than we expect which makes sense because yeah. it's, it's a it's a difficult discipline um, yes. I want to talk a little bit before we jump into questions. So anyone listening, if you have questions, now's a good time to pop them in the chat. Um, but before we get to that, maybe we can talk a little bit about like illustration in the wider design industry. Um, so I'm curious, hmm. like what your thoughts are on things like stock illustrations. Um, like I know there's a lot of trends, you know, sometimes 3d is really popular. Then the next year it's like flat illustration is really popular. Um, any thoughts as an illustrator, like what, what you're thinking when you're seeing these things uh, cropping up in our industry? So, yeah. So, okay. In terms of stock illustrations, I, I personally think they're good, but at the same time, you should not rely on them uh, in a sense that, uh, so there are several, uh, like there are several uh, people in this equation, for example, as an illustrator, should you use stock illustration? Probably not because you are an illustrator and it is expected of you to make. But let's say if you're working in an in-house agency and something has to be churned out quick, mm. then stock illustrations make sense. But ensure to revisit it later and make it in your style. Uh, because a lot of times I see, like I can literally look at the illustration and say, this is taken from this place. And this website and I have seen it in several other places so mm. you pull that illustration out of that product you will just not be able to recognize that which brand it represents so that is that is where I believe stock illustrations fail um, and therefore it is good for example if you are like a product designer who is making something and uh, you want illustration but you don't want to uh, spend a lot of time 
um, on on getting an Illustrator and walk up on it, then it makes sense. Or if you are, let's say, somebody who's starting your own business and initially, uh, of course, initially the idea is to start with an MVP. At that time, you can't really have an in-house Illustrator. Then that makes sense. But I feel like after a point when your brand has evolved uh, to a scale where now it is highly recognized, it is your duty uh, to sort of have not just, uh, you know, branding represent your uh, company, but right. also illustrations and key delight moments also representing your company. So it's highly dependent on from which angle you want to look at. But I think it's really good to get started and quickly yeah. uh, validate an idea or quickly make something out for the world to see. But at the same time, I feel like in a longer run, you should uh, sort of come to a point where we say, okay, now we need to replace that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I would recommend libraries as much as possible, like rather than one off, like finding an illustration yes. on Dribble and then one on Google Images and then one on Pinterest. Like yes. if you can find a, a library so that at least it's all in the same style, I think that that is huge. Um, yeah. One thing I also did uh, at one point is when I was working a lot in at the wireframe stage, I still wanted to use illustration to convey what I was designing and I didn't want to use our in-house illustrations because I wanted to keep it as a wireframe. So I mm. intentionally, uh, you know, I think uh, like Figma communities now, there's a lot of like files, yes. you know, community files in Figma with illustrations as libraries. And so I would like, like download some of those and intentionally use illustrations out, like outside of our our internal library um yeah just to convey like this is just a placeholder but like here is like where an illustration would be and you know conveying something like this um so yeah i think libraries are really really great um and even if you have an in-house illustration team and library i think there's still moments to use external libraries for me it was in like the wireframing phase of my design process yeah um, so yeah they're really great yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I think like with Figma community and like it has like even more accessible now to get, uh, yeah. you know, illustration libraries and uh, and again, it's it, it's like a full library of illustrations and icons, like you said. So it's not like somebody picking one from here, one from there. Yeah. So when you have like a full uh, library, uh, it's very exhaustive and you know that it's all going to look cohesive. Otherwise, one can easily say that, you know, this is from there or these styles and strokes don't match. And that is like yeah. the most distracting part uh, for, yeah. for any designer. <laughs> yeah, it's very distracting. Uh, okay, and a little bit on trends. Like, what are your thoughts on trends and design and illustration? I feel like they're always changing. It's always like a hot topic. Um, as an yeah. illustrator, like, do you feel pressure to keep up with those trends or like, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I, I think, uh, I think the, the most common trend is actually, uh, like 3d and motion. Um, uh, uh -huh. I, 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 I did in iconography in, uh, 3d actually for, uh, Swiggy. Uh, that was a very interesting project because I did not want to do like full, hero illustrations and everything but I was I wanted to pick a very specific topic like can iconography be done in 3D usually mm. it can be done but I had mostly seen them being used on like landing pages and if somebody's or a company is using it I've seen them just painting their entire app mm. in 3D without wow. any uh, without any understanding of where do you need it so i had seen at some point like every listicle every hero every widget has one 3d so for me like it's just a medium above 2d so in my head the way it sits is like icons then more detail is in 2d spot illustrations which are colored and then there is 3d and then above that is images so it's like a scale for me and i feel like wherever i find it relevant i'll use 3d so for example mm -hmm. uh, we use 3d only in home pages uh the moment you enter the cart or when you are in like listing food listing we don't use 3d because the entire purpose of 3d is to create in 
interest or uh, make them excited about the product and and therefore uh, when you know that this is what we're going to use then you know that post when they are now inside the food uh, they don't need to see everything in 3d mm. now it is like very uh, straightforward it has to be quick therefore the icons have to be in 2d or illustrations have to be in 2d so that it's not too much on the eyes um, so i'm I, i was very much interested in uh, you know solving for small sizes like icons and making them in 3d uh, at the same time retaining the color of food because that is one of the biggest challenge if you're working with food like how do you make them uh closer to your brand without actually using colors that are not uh true right. interesting yeah yeah i've never thought about that for food but yes color is so important when when we're visualizing food i feel um okay that's awesome thank you so much let's get to some of the questions we got from folks question. um yeah we got one from karen who says i'm curious to know how long did it take you to illustrate in the beginning compared to now i remember using adobe illustrator some time back and it took me hours to create one icon so i guess like do you feel like you've got a good rhythm now like the speed it's is quite fast compared to when you started or what what did that look like yeah that's actually very true and i can relate to um, to that question because initially when i was struggling uh, you know to make icons and how am i going to make this it's not and i learned illustrator later i learned photoshop first so i was initially mm. doing a lot of photo manipulations and playing with photographs and then i started vector so it was really very really hard and challenging but like i said like with every feel i feel that we need to give them uh, you need to give that a lot of time and practice and for me i was giving that time in uh, my undergrads uh, because uh, after after my college hours i would usually be on my laptop and making illustrations so actually if you see my instagram i haven't deleted a single post ever since i started so you'll see wow. like me posting like a s- small illustration that day um, and i just keep kept doing that so now i have come to a point where i can really churn out a lot of uh, items uh, and now i take more time not to create the asset but to think about that okay is this the right approach or to talk to stakeholders and say uh, does this make sense or does it not uh, so now 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 for me the illustrator or you know making 3d icons is now less about the tool than more about the concept in terms of is it mm. working for our brand or is it not so i would say like initially it is it is hard uh and the initial goal should be just uh uh to just get done with the tool because when the when yeah. learning the tool ends actually that's when like the designing part uh, begins so imagine like somebody is spending a lot of time trying to learn figma then they'll probably not focus more on learning uh, uh learning the design uh, and therefore like for me i did the tool initially so it was very easy later for me to focus on asking the right questions and understanding the users and yeah that's that's pretty much it yeah yeah i i agree it's like there's like learning the tool and then there's like designing that kind of comes after that um and i also feel like the the first thing always takes the longest or is always the hardest so once you create yeah. your first icon that's going to define the principles for the rest of the icon set so like it should you know get easier or get quicker as you as you continue creating the rest of the library yeah. um but yeah it takes some time yeah uh it's... go ahead you know i was saying like it's just like about like internally aligning the compass like okay this is the direction and then you can just basically make a brief out of it and then just scale it like as quickly as you can so this is like even how we approach some of the projects where we as like this is a lot of work but what we can do is we can quickly align on some style or some direction mm. and then we can write a brief and get everybody else to sort of work on that so that brief acts right. as a compass for everybody to uh, to sort of uh, make visuals or uh, work on a project yeah that makes sense that makes sense uh okay paul had a technical question how or when do you consider light or dark mode for illustrations or icons is this something that you have to consider when when creating illustrations and icons light and dark mode yes that's a very valid question 
and i think uh, we we consider light and dark mode um, firstly when the product itself that we are making is actually in dark mode um, so for example swiggy recently uh, launched uh, dine out so it's by default in dark mode so in that mm. case all the iconography is going to be in dark mode so you have to firstly ask the very obvious question that is it going to be in light mode is it going to be in dark mode and if that's usually the case then you sort of design for both and uh, essentially the content remain the same it's just the treatment that you give to the visual that changes so the right. the great way is to use uh, figma components uh, that has been super uh, life saver and then you yes. can just essentially uh, just create variation of light and dark and, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 then solve using that it's essentially like figuring out what works for you uh, and uh, like what visually works that would be a better question but sometimes for example if your if your uh, like app is not catering to dark mode or it's not catering to uh, light mode uh, then you don't probably need to think about those but i i feel like it's always a good thing to sort of consider both of them yeah yeah definitely uh paul also asked um i i think his question is around like what formats do you need to consider for different platforms and potentially dimensions when creating things like icons is there some standard dimensions and sizes they should be different formats like how should designers think about exporting them what does that kind of look like so in terms of uh platforms and formats uh it's very different in what kind of uh system your uh, team is using uh um, so for example uh for example uh, you can very well bundle the icons in the build itself uh, and that could be like an svg uh but at the same time you can also power it by like a cds uh, which is a content distribution uh, system uh, which is uh, uh you can just uh, get it online so in that case you usually use png or you can just make uh, like a font file out of uh, your entire mm. um, um i can set and that's like easier to uh, kind of bundle uh, so therefore it depends on like what kind of um, what kind of i can uh, set the team is using on in terms of technology how you are powering them um, so that is one uh, secondly in terms of sizes actually kind of depends on what your requirements is so it 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 specifically is uh, very much dependent but you can actually check out like material library um, and other libraries as well and see what is the icon sizes that they are using so usually it's a standard of like 18 or 16 and the bigger one is 24 and then this is 32 so there are standard but uh, you can anytime uh, create something of your own uh, but it usually the scale usually starts with icon of 18 uh um, then 32 then uh, 38 40 uh and from there you can start to enter like spot illustration which is like small illustrated icons mm-hmm. which are more detailed and then for them actually the sizes are never defined uh so you can just create something that works like 40 80 120 and uh, yeah. like it, it's highly dependent on what you are making Yeah, I would I would also encourage folks to talk to their design systems team if you if you have one or whoever's responsible for the design system um to ensure it fits within that framework. Um and then also your engineers, especially like Shivam you were talking about like what is the platform like, you know, how how is it being built like is it best to go with the SVGs, the PNGs, like turning it into a font? Um there's probably a good conversation to have with your engineering team as well. Um so I would encourage folks to talk to those two people. Uh Virginia has a question as well. How do you work with brand color palettes when they're very limited just thinking about consistency? So I guess, you know, maybe thinking about a company whose color palette is just like very basic, like a rainbow or something. Maybe they don't have shades or tones. Um how how do you work with something like that as an illustrator? Uh like personally I love when there is limited color. like <laughs> i i really don't like having a lot of colors because the moment you have firstly a lot of colors is 
is when the when the problem actually starts that if you take them out of the app in in solo you are not able to understand that which app it is from that's the very mm. first uh, problem if you have a lot of colors lot of shades uh, and 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 therefore it is very important to limit it uh, and with with lesser colors it's very interesting in in a sense that you have firstly limited colors so you have to play with uh shadows and uh highlights and use that particular color so for example in in spot illustration if you have a uh, a white color then its shadow would be gray or if you have you are using a gray object then its shadow will become black so it is very stark and also because when you have limited color palette the the contrast is really very uh, strong and therefore it, it is uh, easy to view it in smaller sizes as well i think uh, uh, one of the best examples is from uh, uber illustration system and also coinbase as well because the palette is really very uh, strong and 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 limited in in some of the icons mm-hmm. and illustrations so so it 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 works really well uh, when it goes from like white to blue and then blue to black so it the contrast is very strong and i feel like uh you should have limited uh, color palette because that's how you like solve a lot of problems like consistency brand representation and uh, the most important of all uh, which is uh, legibility yeah yeah i think that note around like the contrast is really good like it's the contrast is always more important than the colors itself or like the what you have available um yeah virginia said good point about the contrast i agree so maybe thinking about it from that perspective and like how you can use what you have available to create that contrast yeah uh, and then you can sort of break the rules in other places uh for example if you have a hero image or there's a print collateral then you have right. certain liberty in terms of that you know we can use more colors you can add more texture uh but if if it is like somewhere in the flow of your product or the journey in that case you sort of stick to like core uh icons or or yeah. uh, like having strong contrast and thinking more about legibility than about uh, textures and other um visual methods totally totally Well, I think we're almost about at time. So, thank you Shivam for sharing all of this amazing wisdom and knowledge. I think it's been super great for folks who, you know, don't necessarily have access to in-house illustrators to learn a little bit about the process and some things to think about and how they can get started and bring it into their process. So, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having uh, me. It was a great talk. Yeah, and and where can people go to find you online? Is it just your website? Is there any other links you'd like to share? So, uh yeah, my Instagram is quite honestly uh like where I'm most active, my Instagram yeah. and my website. Yeah. These are the two places that I uh I'm most active at. Awesome. Awesome. Cool, cool. Well, thank you so much to everyone who joined today. We'll be doing uh Design crit I believe next week and we'll have another guest next month. Um so have a wonderful rest of your week and thank you Shivan for joining us. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. All, All right. right. Bye. Thank you. Bye guys.